You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. Uh, we've had him on the prog program before. He is New Mexico's go-to implant dentist, Dr. Peter Thompson. Dr. Thompson, welcome to the program. Good morning, Randy, how are you? Good, good, good. And I know you brought a lot of photos. So we'll, I did. We'll try to get to I as did. many of those as possible. Now, for people that don't know your practices, um, who's the typical dental implant patient these days? Oh, that's a complicated question, my friend. You know, we see a very broad spectrum of people. Literally, to break it down into two groups, we see, um, in, we see a group of people that have dealt with so many frustrations, going to the dentist, numerous visits over the years. A lot of them are to the point where um, they're sick and tired of dealing with issues in their mouth. They're sick and tired of, of pain. They're sick and tired of un their inability to be able to eat. Um, and they just don't know what to do. They literally are at the point where m many of them are like, I don't know, I don't know what my options are. You say their like, teeth are loose. Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Like really bad teeth and gums. Well, we see that, and then we see people that over the years, they go to the dentist, and the dentist would just say, hey, we're gonna pull this tooth. And you go to the same guy enough, and before you know it, you, you don't have enough teeth to truly chew. And here you are in your later period of life where you should be enjoying everything and, and okay. you're having a hard time chewing. So that is a very common patient of ours. Um, someone that still has some teeth. Like they feel like they're headed to dentures? Absolutely, they feel like they're headed to dentures. They don't want dentures. dentures. So those people come to us uh, because they want teeth that are fixed in place on their head. They wanna feel okay. like uh, like they were young again. Give them a second chance at having those those teeth all over again. Okay. Uh, and so that is, you know, that is one of the services we provide. The other group of people are people that um, may have 10 or 15 years ago gone to the dentist and they were told that their only option was the denture. And so they've been wearing a denture. And now, once they're in dentures, they're, no ever, they're not going back to the dentist, right? It doesn't okay. make sense. So the fact that they're not coming back, they don't have an opportunity to really know what's available out there. And my grandfather uh, was stuck in a denture very early in life. And I, as a child, I can still remember the effect that it had on him at every meal, watching grandpa take his teeth out, wash them out and put them back in. It changed who he was. And I was, I was so young that it has still made an impact on me, right? I, I okay. still saw it. And so that affects me a lot now because I know that there's so many people out there that need this service literally in, in Eastern New Mexico and in, in Central New Mexico, which is, which is fairly rural, you probably could fill Cowboy Stadium with- Is that right? Oh, it's, there's- A lot of people. Every, and you know what's funny one? Every single one of them thinks that they're unique. Every single one of them is but ashamed can't be of their smile. Yeah, but it Every, is true though. I mean, if you've been wearing a denture 10 years, you, you don't have enough bone to do this? No, no, it's not, not true. true. Okay. As, as a matter of fact, um, you know, every, techniques have changed dramatically. Randy, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Uh, and from when we first started doing implants to where we are now today, embracing technology, embracing everything else, that we are able to, and I would say, honestly, 99% of the people that come through my door are a candidate for this. Probably 99%. So you don't really have to turn people away. No, no, it's, it, you're a candidate for this because we're, our techniques have gotten a lot better, implants have gotten a lot better, and we, we know what we're doing so much better now than we did 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Implants have been around for, for ever. I mean, they've you been around since the You think that's a feature of Egyptians. dentistry, like 20 years from now, dentures will all be attached to something? I would hope so. If I can have anything to do with it, I just, truthfully, I think that people are so much more happy. They're so much more satisfied. There's so much, it makes such a difference in their life and it, it makes them feel so much better about themselves to have their teeth fixed in place. How like old can you be to do this? Like what's your oldest patient? Uh, my oldest patient was in her late 80s, but my take on why this- Why would an 88, 89 year old wanna do this? Why wouldn't you wanna do it? Seriously, I mean, you have spent your entire life, you, uh, how many people do you know, Randy, that uh, around 50 or 60 have used their hips and knees so much that they've had to replace them, right? Okay. Okay, same thing with your teeth. Your teeth wear out, 
Uh, they are, they, you get a set when you're young, you get a set <laughs> when you're a little bit older, and then by the time most people, you're blessed, obviously, okay, you thanks. have beautiful teeth, okay? Thanks. Um, by the time you get into your 50s, there's so much wear and tear going on that, you know, you're, it, it, really, it, for many, many people, it makes sense to just consider replacing. So it's like the third set of teeth. Absolutely. And if you, Interesting. If you get there, um, why would you not want that for yourself when you're at that point in life? Say you're in your 80s uh, and you, you're trying to be a social butterfly. You're trying to spend as much time with your friends and with your families. Well, what do you do when you're with your friends and your families? You're you eating. get together and you eat, right? Well, if you, okay. can't, if you can't appreciate and you can't enjoy that food as much as you want to because your inability to chew it, perhaps your inability to taste it because you have acrylic across the roof of your mouth, it's a perfect time in life to do it. And that's, it's a bit of a paradigm shift for some people because I do hear all the time, I'm too old for this. And I, my response to them is I respectfully disagree with you, but you're the perfect So 70s, is really young. 70s in is- In your chair. 70s is pretty typical. And, and I th so your colleagues are doing like 95 year olds, 90 year olds? Yes, yes. Which is hard to believe, but truthfully, uh, at any point in life, if you can truly make such a significant difference in how you feel and your enjoyment, why wouldn't you? Very nice. Why wouldn't you? Right. Now, your center. Let's talk about the center for a second. People need to know I'm not trying to side with you, but I know a, a thing or two about your center. That I guess how implants, correct me if I'm wrong, um, are typically done. You go to one place that does the surgery, and before that, even another place to get the, your CT scan. Right then they surgery, and then another doctor puts the teeth on, and then they're maintained elsewhere. Right. At your office, it's all done right there. Right. Is that why you do it so quickly, because you're doing it all right there? Uh, yes, and I've been doing this a long time. Okay. So it, it, the process is, I'm not, I'm not gonna take credit for this, but the processes have gotten a lot better. Okay. Technology has helped dramatically. Um, as a surgeon, I'm a lot better. 15 years ago, I, I wasn't as good as I am now. So. The fact that uh, as we as we go into these cases, um, from start to finish, in if all things goes ideal, okay, if yeah. everything goes ideal, how many visits, including the records visit, three. Okay. So the records visit would be the first time that we meet. Okay. okay. Second visit is the day of the surgery, which incidentally you're going to take a nap, which is you know if I could if I could. If I could tell you the best way to have dentistry done is to not remember it. Like sedation. Hallelujah, sign me up, right? Because it's very safe and I can control it and I can get people in and out. The beauty of it is that uh, you don't remember your visit. And what a perfect really? thing for dentistry. You don't remember it's an amnesiac. So it's a perfect way to have dentistry done in this regard. Because you know, not only are we dealing with, oh my gosh, I hate my smile or, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated because I can't chew, we're also dealing with, I hate the dentist. I hate the smells, I hate the sounds, I hate everything about it. And so if you had to be awake through all this versus you come in, I start a, a gentle IV in your hand or in, in your yeah. arm, uh, and next thing you remember, you're waking up, walking out the so door with a smile. Do you think it's insensitive when a dentist comes on my show and says, all we give him is a pill? I don't think it's insensitive. I just think that's their experience level. And I used to do that. I used to do a lot of uh, oral conscious sedation. And I, my experience with I'd that, be safer, isn't it? In my humble opinion, um, in my hands, what I found was that with oral conscious sedation, it was really easy to get people sloshed. Like to the point that I was uncomfortable with where, how sedated they were. Because I couldn't control it. You can't as well. I can control it as well. With IV, I already have a central line. Nice. So if okay. I need if okay. I need a little bit more, I give them a little bit more. If I need them a little less, it's super easy to reverse them. And uh, you say they all have regrets. You told me in the green room. Every one of them has told me that they have a regret. Really? And, and the regret is that they didn't do it earlier. Okay. Okay. It's not that everyone thinks that oh, okay, it's going to be this experience and and oh, it's going to be so painful and that and it, the the honest truth is. It is a very comfortable experience. Um, it is a very quick experience, and it's one of the best things. Every one of these people will tell you it's one of the best things they ever did. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so what are we looking at? So, these are these are some of my favorite 
cases. Okay. Because it, it, we see such dramatic changes in people's lives, and these are some that, that to me. This is Mary Lou. Um, Mary Lou um, came to us just like our typical patient, very frustrated, uh, not knowing what to do, um, wanting, so, uh, a, wanting a solution for her that made sense, that she could um, enjoy in her life, that would, would be able to help her feel more confident, be able to help her be able to go out and socialize more. Mary Lou, when she came to us, um, she was at the point where she was probably headed into a denture and she didn't want to have a denture. And so we decided together that we were going to do something for her and check this out. I mean, check That's out the nice. difference in these two patients, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. If you were to meet one and, and, and then meet the other, you probably wouldn't recognize her. She just is... Looks like maybe the younger sister. Truthfully. She, she is a different person when she comes into our practice now. It has, it has changed her personality in the sense that she's more gregarious, outgoing, uh, more bubbly. Uh, and more confident. And she tells me it has made a significant difference in her enjoyment of being able to go out and socialize. How and soon can they eat? You should be able to eat the first day. Okay. Okay. Uh, you're, you're like, take it easy a little bit. Your diet's going to be a little limited for the first two or three weeks. Uh, but by the time we get the final restoration in there, which for us is at about three weeks, the final things, teeth, final teeth are about three weeks. Um, you can go to town and, and again this is this is we see this again and again and again and in in our world this is funny because I tell I tell our patients we get to experience the before and the after on everybody we know we hear from every one of them the same story and everyone thinks they're unique everyone thinks I'm the only person out here with this problem I'm ashamed of my smile we meet people every day that are like this and then we get to see the transition. So it's just fun. It's just okay. fun. Here's, here's Ernesto. Ernesto had, um, again, lots of issues. That's pretty bad. Okay. He, he was at the point where um, he, he wasn't able to eat and chew. He was frustrated with it. Um, he owns a business. He, was, he, was, uh, he, was, he felt like people were judging him because of the conditioning of his teeth. Uh, and check this out, Randy. I mean, check that out. You go from, you go from Ernesto to movie star. He looks good. He looks great. So and, those and are just upper and lower brand new teeth supported by upper implants. Upper and lower brand new teeth supported by implants. His was a very complicated. So they thing. can eat steak, whatever, or they have to be careful. I hope so. No, I hope, I hope you can go to town on ribs and corn on the cob. Well, now this guy looks more sophisticated, more handsome. Uh, you know, I always think you guys are exaggerating. Like we're talking about where you yeah. say, ready, it changes your whole look. But I think anybody looking at this, it does. What do they like more, the way it looks or what they could eat? It, it's uh, truly, it's a combination of everything. Unfortunately, our society has, has kind of plagued us with the mentality that if, you, if you're walking around and you're missing some teeth in your smile, people think are automatically going to make an assumption about you. And I don't like that personally, okay, okay. but listen, that's what Hollywood does, right? If Hollywood needs to cast a character that of someone that is slightly less intelligent or maybe struggling with decisions in life or whatever, they take away a couple front teeth, right? Or they yeah, gray up their yeah, teeth okay. or they make them gums look nasty. And suddenly everybody already knows that, right? The same thing happens if you want to increase, improve their credibility, you give them a nice smile. And that is what we deal with in our society. And because I get to deal with all sides of it, um, I don't necessarily like the negativity of it, but I do love the positivity. I love the, the okay. characters. I get hugs all the time. Here's another great case, Holly, okay? Holly- Well, she looks young. She is young. She is young. And she's one of the younger that we've dealt with. Um, she also would have possibly she was, 100%, denture. she was 100% head into dentures and could not, at her age, and I'm glad she did this, um, at her age, she just couldn't mentally kind of wrap her heads around. This young lady literally looks like a model now. Wow. Very okay. nice. Uh, and not only that, but so when you're, when you're dealing with the psyche of a 30-something-year-old young lady that's dealing with life and everything that's going on in this Instagram world that we live in where everybody's taking selfies you know the fact that you can smile and you can be proud of your teeth no one that's going to meet her for the first time is going to think oh you've got 
you've got a nice looking. They adventure. look like porcelain veneers. They're I mean, beautiful. That's like perfection. They're beautiful. I'm not trying to side with you here. Yeah. But it's it's like a whole. I mean, you could imagine on a job interview. Yeah. Yeah. Like one smiling. What is it? Yeah. I mean, this looks good. Yeah. Okay. You know, and and what what effect does a smile have on people? Well, if you if if I walk into a store and I am looking at two different salespeople and one of them's smiling at me and one of them's not, which one am I going to go to? Okay. The one that's smiling, right? I mean, the smile. You're into. I mean, you're excited about this. I the smile is so fun because. It, we change, I hate saying this, this is so stereotypical, but we change people's lives. And it's a subtle thing. They make a decision to do something, and my team is involved with this, and we love it. From start to finish, we love it. It's what Good. drives us and what keeps us going. Here's another great case. David, uh, a typical guy, right? I don't care what my teeth look like, David said. I don't care what my teeth look like. I, I want to be able to chew. Uh, and, and with all the problems that we've already discussed that, that all these people have, uh, he was not able to do it. And he, again, he decides to do this. And here's what, here's what we... Very nice. Right. So I want you to notice on all of these that we're not just throwing teeth in the mouth. This, we are doing this with a lot of science behind. Is there a computer uh, there's, helping you design this? There is. There is. It, the, the, the information is all available. If you want it, if you want to have a computer do 100% of this, you can. Let me show you Roper. Okay. One of my favorite cases. I've known Roper for a long time. Roper, again, was struggling with the same things that we've been talking about, right? And it, it, he's in the sales industry. And so, again, dealing with dealing with people's preconceived notions as to who he is based upon the appearance of his teeth. Like they look poor what, or yeah, whatever, uneducated yeah, whatever, or whatever. Yeah, what, whatever it is. Not exactly. Clean. Right. They, if you're missing a tooth, people think that you are less education, right? Especially in your smile. Um, Roper is a very gregarious, outgoing person, just naturally. Nice. And when we were able to do this, this is very, very new in the process. Uh, like literally just a couple days uh, after he got his teeth, he's still getting used to them. He still hasn't figured out how to just kind of relax and smile. Uh, but I saw him the other day and I said, hey, Roper, and just yelled at him across the street. And man, I got, I got this, this great smile from him. And I was hey, like, good. you know, that, that is what I love. Those are the, the experiences. And Randy, here's another And one. he would have ended up in a denture. Absolutely. So those are new upper That's lower teeth. That's why he came to see me. Okay. They were upper and lower teeth that are fixed in place that do not come in and out. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another another great case. Uh, Amanda, uh, again, frustrated, um, affecting her self confidence, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that we see with everybody. This young lady is stunning. Uh, what a difference it made in her life. Very nice. Okay. Uh, again, looking at that's one of my favorite pictures. It's from her social media, but. You know, I mean, if you were to compare these two pictures of each other, uh, what a difference that totally makes. Totally different uh, look. Right. Completely. Okay. Um, that is, again, the best part of my job. When they, what's it like when they look at the mirror for the first time? If I can get a hug and there's tears in their eyes, it's a good day. Um, for many people, it's, it's, Wow. I mean, wow. We always strategically keep a box of napkins right there because truthfully... They tear up. The people tear up. It's it, even guys. Even guys. Buddy. Okay. Perfect case. Okay. okay. Buddy. Um, had, he, he had very, again, along the same lines, th thought he was unique, dealing with issues, not able to eat and chew. Uh, here we are again. Uh, Whoa. I, I'm telling you. And, and for Buddy, Buddy was only Golly, worried about... totally different. Uh, Buddy was only worried about what we call as dentist function, okay? He was worried about, I just want to eat and chew. I don't care what I look like. And, I, and what we'll see in, in our part of the world is the guys that are like that will grow these big beards that hide their teeth, right? Uh, and so we approached his case because we were trying to help him eat. He wanted, wanted to eat. eat and chew and just go to town okay. and, and really... Socially, he wanted to be able to go out and not be concerned that his teeth were going to come loose in the middle of a, of a get-together with his friends. Um, he was frustrated with the taste where you, you, you couldn't taste your food quite as well because of the, what he was wearing in his mouth at the time. Uh, and so, complete turnaround. Uh, he has, his health is completely turned around because really, 
and something we don't probably don't do a good enough job with as dentists is talking about what does it mean to have unhealthy teeth in your head, right? As I said before, you have beautiful teeth. Your mouth is healthy. It's obvious just looking okay. at you. Thanks. But for most people, they don't know. They Looking at the general person in the crowd, 80 to 85 percent of American population have some form of gum disease. And that's, so it's a bacterial infection. It's a bacterial so infection. So when you clear up the infection. It's endemic. It's within everybody. When you clear up the infection, they feel better? Absolutely. In these people, the infection has progressed so far that they don't even realize how much it's affecting But if your gums are bad, you can still do this? I mean, bad Absolutely. gums? Yeah. It's, it's funny. Well, the gums I, will hold the implants? The, it's the, the gums are trying to get rid of the teeth like your body would try to get rid of a splinter. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're red, they're puffy, get rid of this. It's not that way with implants. I mean, it's the craziest thing, truthfully. And we've done this, I've done this thousands of times. By the time you get rid of all those infected teeth and you put implants in there, the gums are healthy, the tissue okay, is healthy, it is, it is robust. And consider now on this, on this very person that had this infection in their body, it's like weighing their battery down. Their battery is constantly being drained because they're dealing with this infection, right? And when you remove that infection, okay. their body suddenly, and I, anecdotally, again, I say, um, I hear this all the time, but truthfully, people say, I feel so much better. I, I just feel healthier. I just, you know, we know that gum disease is a leading cause of certain types of diabetes. We know it's a leading cause of several aspects of cardiovascular disease, strokes, certain times, types of cancers. Uh, the, the bacteria are the same. It's the same bacteria in the body. Uh, so if we can eliminate that infection, even though it's low grade, even though you may okay. not know you have it, uh, your body is able you to feel better. function better. There's an immune response. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And if, and to be able to do that in the second half of your life when you really need it, it's a perfect time to do it. Again, I tell people, the time to do this is when you're in your 70s and 80s, and it, you've had your hip replaced, you've had your knee replaced. Enjoy the rest of your life. Eat. We are short on time, and I know you have a, a few more left, so I'll kind of rush you a little bit. No. What no are we rush. looking at? I love talking about these cases. Okay, so th this is one of my favorite cases. All right. Um, Megan, young, beautiful young lady, had so much going on in her life. New, new marriage, some kids. Um, again, was dealing with the, the stigma of society because she was having some dental issues. Um, and so we were able to, again, fix teeth that don't come in and out and she Looks actually good. blogged. She actually blogged on this. She okay. she did okay. a blog well, online nice. where we were going through the process. Um, and I love talking to her. I love seeing her because every time she comes in, she's just a, a, a bubble, bubbly person. Love that. Okay. Okay. Let me show you Savannah. This is a very, Savannah, I love this woman. She has just been such wow. an incredible um, supporter of our practice. But That's so, got to be unusual to have teeth like that. Oh, no. Randy, as I said earlier, literally these people are a dime a dozen. I, we could walk around here. What, they just don't smile so you don't see They it. don't smile, and it doesn't take much to not show your teeth. I mean, okay. you just, okay. you and I like to smile, right? I mean, you are, you've you got a beautiful smile. These people have beautiful smiles, <laughs> okay. and it, it makes, it, it makes so a huge her difference. her option was a denture? Her option, she was heading towards a denture. So right. no way. Right, and there's no way she was going to have that. And look at, it, uh, compare those two, how much more relaxed what? she looks how totally younger different. she looks 25 years younger truthfully 20 looks 20 years younger and t that's the the joy that we get this uh, sorry that i'm i'm okay. rushing me but jillian truthfully was one of my favorites uh, young lady again and she had so many complicated issues going on uh, that we were really uh we gave her a couple of different options and she chose uh, to do these fixed teeth. And this is not our When you typical... say fixed teeth, we're talking about upper and lower teeth that don't I'm come out. I'm talking upper and lower teeth that, that do okay. not come in and out, okay. okay? And this is one of my favorite pictures because it's a little uh, more unique. Most of these these pictures, we try to you know, put them into a, a, an actual scenario where we're getting a smile. This is just her and I, okay? Uh, I saw such nice. an incredible transition in her life. She's now going to school. She's completely changed 
the trajectory of her life simply by having some ability to be confident in who she is and confident in her smile and not being ashamed of that. Love it. That's good. Love it. We're out of time. Okay. But final message to the, the two groups, the denture wearers, which you say you could probably help the most, yeah. and then the people with the bad gums, bad teeth, bleeding gums. They've heard what you had to say today, but for whatever reason, they're still skeptical or still afraid. What do you say to them? You know, here's what I say. Come in and sit down. It's not, that's all it's going to, all I ask. Come in and let's sit down and let's just talk. Okay. Let's talk about what the possibilities are for you. Uh, I can show you, I can explain to you a lot of things. The, the, the reality is so many people are so comfortable walking into a car dealership and spending $50,000 on a new car. That car in two years is worth 20. It's getting worn out, right? You can spend some money in your mouth and it's just going to get better <laughs> and better okay, and better. From the eating and the chewing your, and the smiling. Your life is that little drastic difference of you being able to go out every night and enjoy social situations. You can't put a dollar amount on that. Good. You can't put a dollar amount on what it means to truly be able to taste the spices in really good Mexican food because you'd no longer have acrylic across the roof of your mouth for the rest of your life. How do you put a how do you put a dollar amount on that? You Good just you. can't. Right? So no more dentures. No more dentures. Why would you? And people are financing this because insurance, really, just Medicare, like, Medicaid like doesn't cover car. this. Truthfully, it's just she like could, you would a car. She could finance it. Yeah. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Good stuff. Thanks, Randy. All right. Always a pleasure. You've been watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.